We are live. Hello, and welcome to TribesCast.com. My name is Delirium. We are covering Tribes Ascend tonight, a match between Team Void Engineers and Team Llama Grab. With me is a new face, Sadakus, is helping us commentate tonight. Say hello, Sadakus. How are you doing, guys? Looking forward to this. We also have Bart, as usual, helping us do his eSports Swami Guru self, running this very cool <laughs> competition invitational proof of concept. Closed beta series of scrimmages between all these cool, uh, excited, exciting teams. Craig is as usual as on is on camera helping hello, us cover hello. this event. And we are actually starting right away. There's not a whole time to introduce this match. We're gonna start on Crossfire. It's gonna be the first map. Uh, Sadikus, do you have a favorite going into this match between these two teams? I uh, actually haven't seen a lot of these two teams. We did scrim against Void Engineering the other night. I know they've got a good sniper and a couple of good stay-at-home defenders, so I do look forward to seeing them. Although, unfortunately, uh, on this map, it's more about a standoff, so we'll see if Llama Grab can get the flag home pretty quickly. I think a lot of teams are considered standoffs kind of inevitable in this game. I know that last time Void Engineers did best Llama Grab, and they were looking very much forward to a rematch to try and get some of their honor and dignity in the tribes roll back. Already we see for uh, Team Llama Grab, Tweaksy is going offense. We're looking at they have no Sentinels, I'm kind of surprised. There's a Sentinel for Void Engineers uh, in the form of Lanthus. He's a pretty good sniper. Uh, let's see, Rakeups are made up of a couple of Rangers, a few Rangers on the Llama Grab side, one Pathfinder, a Soldier, a Scrambler. Already a, a quick pickup and drop for the, on the Blood Eagle side. Uh, that would be, I'm not sure who that was. Oh, they're not going to do this map. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was just noticing that myself, actually. I, I wasn't sure. It seemed like a pretty sloppy setup on a couple of defense there, so I was kind of curious as to what was going on. I don't know why they decided to ready up on the last map and then go to this map, but... <laughs> that gives us a little more time to introduce them. <laughs> they're trying to cajole Barton to giving them patch notes. Yes, I do want more time to introduce them because, like I said, Lama Cry has been itching for revenge again after their loss to Void Engineers. But, yes, uh, absolutely. J I, I just want to chime in. Oh, sorry, sorry. I just want to chime in one interesting fact that Bart pointed out to us before the match that uh, that made me a little bit of a, a favorite toward one of the teams. I guess Bytor has two sons on the team with him. I thought that was pretty cool. Right, I didn't know that either. That was news to me that uh, there's family playing on Void Engineers. I, I thought it was just Bytor carrying on Legacy from Tries 1 that, that the Void Engineers you know, name had, but uh, there's, there's apparently family in there. So actually, there, there's going to be no patch notes for anybody because Bart is piecing out to go to a meeting. But now that the match has started, we're going to be going to Katabatic, considered the most balanced map in the pool. I was wrong about the crossfire thing. I'm sorry, everyone. I was told to say Calabunga dudes for turtle bacon. So that's been done, taken care of, <laughs> good to go. Enjoy those uh, Ninja Turtle pajama pants you wear, buddy, <laughs> and keep it real. So here we go, Katabatic, the remade snow map from Tribes 2. Uh, pretty good hills. It's very large, so there's a little bit more travel time and uh, not quite as much of options to crash stand when you're in trouble. You have to have a pretty dedicated and steady offense. So uh, once again, I'm going to try this over again. For Team Lama Grab, we have Window, Laukin, Arthur Sid, Tweak, Seattle Ice, Thomasar, Toriel, and Sharkax. I love that name. My favorite name in Tribes is Send Sharkax. Versus Bytor, the furious leader of the Void Engineers from 12, 10 years ago. Tries one days. Rippo 58, Furious Phantom, Lanthus the Sniper, Nitrous, Snowdog. Snowdog and Lanthus apparently are related to Bytor's amount and Squidly. And a quick grab by Toriel within a half a minute is already <laughs> going to get hit by the turret. Being escorted by Sharkax and Lalkin. This is the uh, Lama Grab is being very aggressive with their first grab. They have a lot of people escorting that guy. It's really cool to see them just sort of run over the stand and then and then make off with that fly. That's going to put Warriors under some pressure. They're going to have to move the. Uh, Lone grab flag. No, they get a kill, I think. Let's see if yeah, they really, get a really return. Yeah, really good punt, actually, to push that down, but Rip beat him to it Ooh. for the return, so... Immediate chain grab by Shark Hacks. They were all over the sand. I guess they sort of broke off and went back, circle around as they realized they weren't going to be able to get it all the way home. And now they've got, again, Woodgears under pressure because that flag is halfway home already. Yeah, interesting there that they went in for that, that quick attack approach. They did have four on the stand for Void Engineering. I, I expected that to be a bit of a stronger defense with... Uh, with what they were doing. Uh, also, they did get the e-grab there. That's going to push them off. Bytor did pull that away from the stand there. And uh, a return does come in for the Void Engineering. So we'll see if they can get this back. That's a great play for them to turn this around. 
Vitor running around the side here. Does have a sight line broken. No tweaks back on him with that chain gun and taken down by Seattle Ice with that scope shot. So uh, we should see a reset here of both flags. <laughs> scope shot. Apparently, uh, Sato Kiss is a, a veteran of the Call of Duty scene, and so that's why he's calling Sentinel scopers. But, um, I apologize. <laughs> that's okay. No, we, we love all of our, our new FPS friends here at Tribes Ascend. The the much-deserved uh, sequel to the Tribes franchise. Uh, yeah, it looked like they had that under control. I, I was looking at Bytor furiously running away, white out jumping with those grenades with, in Scrambler, but Scrambler capping the, the thing that Bart pushed so hard for so long, I guess that must have been popular in-house in, in at the Hyrule Studios, uh, it has become the thing to do. It's very, very strong. Uh, we are looking at a, an attempt on both flags. Sarkax is on the political side, or for the political side is coming in. Gets away. Snowga is in instantly killed by Laukin over the hill, and it puts back on the stand. So again, Lamagar is putting the pressure on. I'm looking to see more dedicated offense from Wingineers to handle this because the flag is not being moved on that side. Sharkax is coming in for a timed return. It's going to be a quick. Oh, he's killed by Rip. Last second save there. Fantastic. But the flag is still live, and I'm not. Uh, yeah, there's not going to be any chance for them to stop this. It's going to be a quick 1-0. No, he's not on the stand again. What's happening? Hi. There are players coming in to stop him. There goes Nitrous and Furious Phantom. Who's the E-grab? Um, they're keeping it live, but it's but there is still some motion here. They keep their flag still, but there's, they're buying precious seconds to their team to keep, get in gear. Laukin is almost at the stand, but again, here come some players. Bytor, too late, though. There we go. There's the first, <laughs> first score of the game. Rip gets the, the counter grab a little bit too late, and he is going the long way around. A little bit of chain gun fire on him. Uh, one generator is down. I've noticed they've taken the blood eagle generator out. There goes Shark Hacks again. Is he, he's running Pathfinder. They're okay with that. Some people like the Pathfinder routes on Catabatic because they are so quick. But there's not a whole lot of HP there if you do end up in trouble. It does actually look like they're running two uh, Pathfinders. One in Shark Hacks, the other in Toriel. So uh, I don't see too many Scramblers. In fact, no Scramblers on their team. So they have elected to go with the Pathfinder capping. An interesting choice. Uh, whereas on the other team, we see all medium classes uh, with Scrambler capping, with the exception of Atlantis on the Sentinel. So, a little bit of a different lo loadout choice here. We'll see how that plays out for each team. Uh, right now, the flag does get returned again for Llama. And uh, Lant uh, Shark Hacks, pardon me, trying to get across the top of that hill. He does have five guys on him. Nitrous gets the kill. Flag bouncing around. Toriel going for the E-grab out of the field. Does manage to pick it up. Lanthus with the sniper coming in with the with the Nova Colt gets the kill. That's fantastic. Oh. And the air return. That is some in active sniper play if I've ever seen it. Uh, you know, snipers are generally considered, you know, really great at killing carriers, but not so good at returning flags. Lanthus a uh, just strong there. Uh, flags are both sitting pretty. Um, I'm interested to see if they... Her, you know, uh, the second generator's gone down, actually. Uh, dinosaur generator's just been killed about a minute or half a minute ago. Uh, that's going to come into play. If they wait long enough, it makes it so that the team has to decide, I have money for a strike now. Do I go repair the generator, or do I wait an extra several minutes? Usually, generators go down. There's a snow dog over the hill. And that's pretty fast. He's running, it looks like Pathfinder, yeah. And that's going to be halfway home already. We just lost a player. I guess that was Bart on the thing. Window with the E-grab is going to stop that from being capped right away. No, it made a return by one of the defenders. Slow Dog is yeah. just flew up there. He's a, Tweak is a little bit too late to kill him, and now it is tied. Voyager is not going to take the lying down. Uh, Lama got to get the early cap, but uh, they're not going to let this revenge match go uncontested. Yeah, and like, and like a few teams I've seen, playing a lot of guys at home on the stand on Kata, just to break that fast cap, and then, uh, and then they're easily turtled for, for a standoff. We haven't seen a standoff yet. I'm, uh, I'm interested to see how that'll work with two light players on, uh, on Llama, but we will see how that works and out when that comes. This is what I was talking about. There is a strike out for Blood Eagle. Uh, someone is calling for me to look at the attacks on the Diamond Sword flag by Window and Tweak. I don't see any cappers coming in right away. Nope, Shark Hacks, he's faked me out. I'm not sure where he came from, but <laughs> maybe that was because he was scrambled and I couldn't see him. No, nope, he's still running Pathfinder. I'm kind of surprised to see that. But uh, yeah, the strike is up for Blood Eagle, and there is no strike up for Diamond Sword because their generator was killed so late that you have to repair it in order to get one. Toriel saved Shark Hacks, but there was a counter grab by Rip going the opposite direction. That strike that was on him, that means it's going to be hard for him to get home by himself. Yeah, absolutely. I gotta say, I gotta, I gotta give good credit to Lama on their their important <laughs> and <laughs> Lama. No, good credit on their important uh, uh, escorting 
That's three or four times now. I've seen the flag get knocked out of the initial grabber's hands and instantly picked up in the field by a teammate. They are going to get a return here, and uh, coming in with the flag is Toriel in that Pathfinder loadout. Does get the cap. That's going to make it 2-1 here at the 18-minute mark. See if, Looks uh, like someone come back. tried to strike but was killed before he could get that uh, strike to come down and stand to stop the play. Uh, pretty good by... I mean, Long Grab seems to have brushed up their game, practiced very hard for this. They definitely wanted to try and try and win back some TNA from Wind Engineers. Uh, yeah, but uh, someone has repaired the generator, I think, so they have the Shrike now in the hands of Rip to counter the Shrike being piloted by Laukin. And uh, I'm looking to see another... Just, everyone's have reset now, the flags are sitting still, and it's 2-1 for Llama Grab. Llama Grab, of course, being the term for a really bad flag grab. They've been doing really good ones, though. It's all been Shark Hacks and that Pathfinder. Here comes Snowdog again. And on the other side, Shark Hacks is going to make a grab attempt. He gets away. So... I was hoping to see a, you know, hopefully the first standoff of the game a minute ago, but unfortunately. Speaking, uh, speaking of standoffs, we got a strike battle going on on the uh, the backside of the Demigod <laughs> flag here. So always standing to watch two strikes go head to head like this. Bytor's keeping the flag alive. That was dropped by, I guess, by Snowdog or somebody, but he's quickly killed. There's a strike, of course, covering it. Look at this dug fight. They're hoping, looking for the time return. There goes Shark Hacks through. That's a quick three-one. And there again, Rip has the counter grab, but he's a little bit too late to stop the play, so... Uh, yeah, he did come out be, of a strike on that, too, yeah. so a lot of speed. It's going to be Shrike versus Flag Caver here. Not a pretty sight, usually. I gotta say, Sadikus, you're a pretty good caster. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I do have a, I do have a lot of experience from Call of Duty. I've, uh, I've done probably over 150 matches there, so... Definitely put my voice Ooh, up to a few Bytor challenges. Ooh, there to escort his carrier. Oh, oh that's right, just get there. missing. Before he get home, though, oh, and there's a kill by Arthur Sid. Shark Hacks is right there with the flag pressures, keeping that Wingers flag moving. I'm not sure what's happening with the Wingers defense. They haven't been able to keep it, Shark Hacks, from getting away with that flag. Yeah, despite some, some heavy stacking on the flag, they really haven't. I think what they're going to have to do, and if we were in this position, I think what we would try and do is... Oh, is, no! Uh, Oh, wow. Snowdog came in, got the flag, tried to punt it as he ran to the tower. Unfortunately, that's not going to go anywhere. It's just <laughs> sitting on the hill. Oh, but the Diamond Sword flag has been dropped. So you were saying they were stacking the flag on the Diamond Sword side? Well, I'm just, I'm just thinking that right now I think they should probably try and focus on getting the flag off the stand. And you see them there jumping in. I'm not sure who that was. Their bite tour coming in with a quick e-grab. Getting it off the stand and maybe trying to go into standoff mode. We haven't seen one of those yet. And uh, where they've got so many guys at home, it could be advantageous to them uh, to do that. But I do think that having stacking D was kind of the old idea for Tribes of Sen from a few weeks ago when people considered that was kind of the only way you were going to keep your flag home. But I think that people have sort of begun to realize that defense is uh, a little bit disadvantaged. That e-grab you're talking about by Bytor was attempted to be an e-grab, but I think that actually Rip made an amazing play a minute ago, getting his flag home, so that grab was not necessarily needed. And that, that flag being maybe sat in the field returned by Arthur Sid, so it's going to be back to reset mode for both teams. The strike goes down, the diamond sword flag, but there's no one there to grab it. Here comes Shark Hacks looking for another grab. Let's see if he gets past Nitrous, and he, you know, he misses the flag. A tweak was not able to clear for him, I don't think. Yeah, a lot of speed again. Still using those Pathfinders. Haven't seen either of them switch into Scrambler, which I thought maybe one would, you know, try a different approach. But they do have the lead right now, so why change things when they work? I I think there there is. I mean, there is no dog running that Pathfinder, which is what he's got right now. And looking at that Laukin to try and kill him. They're they were trying to hold their fil their flag home, but Sharkax is already over that big hill. Not sure how he got past all the defenders who are hanging around here. There's a lot of offense though from Lomograd trying to keep that uh, uh, stand disrupted. So I was looking like he's going to be in trouble. There's window and tutorial all trying to get him. And that strike is also being very brave over on the offensive side. It's really only Bytor here threatening Shark Hacks in the meantime. Yeah, one flag down on the field. Looks like it's just passed off here. We might see a standoff if this continues, the first one of the game. And Ooh, Lockin like four... abandons his strike. Trying to go for a return, is he? We got on the meanwhile for the lamb on the defensive side. We got Nitrous <laughs> and Furious Phantom coming in hard. That, yeah, it, it is actually Llama Grab. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm also, I'm also a Canadian caster. So anyone oh, who's no. previously <laughs> said that, that would also be. Perhaps it's just Canadian to say uh, Lama as opposed to Llama. No, no. I mean, so. I think, I think calling them Lama Grab is pretty dignified for the, for them. We actually are in standoff mode, thankfully, but I, you know, for a minute there, I was a little concerned for uh, Squidly and Snowdog. There was some danger there, but um, it's like they've stabilized everything, and it's gonna 
it's going to be down to see how these teams handle stand up. It's a kind of a neutral situation for a lot of teams. They're used to doing a kind of an old style tribes game where you would play really fast flag, flag plays and you get the flag home, you know, almost instantly. <coughs> Sorry, I don't mean to cut you off there. Just, uh, just one quick thing, Noah. Uh, on cue, given that the generator is up for Llama, they did take advantage. Bytor jumped in a second strike, so that's going to be a, uh, a big big advantage for them on this standoff. However, they do drop the enemy flag. They do manage to get back up Ooh, now. Shark has grabbing it. Three guys. This. I was going to say earlier that one of the strikes that Lachlan was paddling was stolen by Lambda, but I think that that's now... Or Lanthus, I should say. But now that's turned around. He's in another strike. Killing killing flag carriers by the, by the pound over here on Dimesward side. How are they holding we up? We did get a side? return, though. Oh, I guess they and got away with it. Oh, last second save by Toriel. Was he running a real route? Is he in Pathfinder? It looks like he might be. Yeah, there we go. He's off to the races all by himself. No chasers in sight. I don't think Twin is going to get this return, though. Yeah, it's going to be stabilized again. Absolutely, yeah, and uh, Lama's already got uh, four or five guys home coming out to <laughs> escort. Now Shark Hacks and Tom. Uh, as well as Arthur Sid, so they're going to be pretty stabilized coming into their flag stand. What's it look like on the other side? Take that tweak from now on, your Lamagraph forever. Uh, well, they're holding it in a Doombringer. I'm kind of surprised <laughs> to see that. Squidly has changed to Doombringer. <laughs> I, I do love to see uh, people be, be brave with classes. I, actually, my team was saying that Doombringers are pretty good on standoffs. But that chain gun is just brutal. Yeah, the other thing on a standoff is uh, that you know you can take down some, get some hard shots onto a Shrike, which is uh, pretty important these type of these type of games and standoffs where strikes are so dominant right now in the game well what i heard was they were saying send a doombringer offense and make everybody try and shoot at him because he's got so many hp and if you don't focus fire he's going to mow your guys down with this chain gun yeah i've heard both approaches um and i've also seen a lot of people stacking the raider on uh or sorry uh well i guess raider would work as well but mostly ranger and just chain gunning anyone in the air and i've seen that work really well i've seen tau take that approach and uh, it worked worked extremely well for them in standoffs I'm trying to see if they were sending somebody goofy in here, if that was an infiltrator or something. There are different ways to handle standoffs. You can do an infiltrator with SmackDown. You can do uh, send an offensive strike, try to kill the carrier like they did a minute ago with Laukin. You can do things like, I don't know, have a couple guys stay defense and just send a ton of offense and try and get it back. Absolutely. I mean, right now Mama. we're seeing... Go ahead. Oh, sorry, no, Llama just coming in with a timed attack here as Window and Tweak come off the hill. Tweak's got very little health left, so he's probably going to go down quite quickly here. But the Shrike also coming in over the top, trying to get a ram on that flag, oh. does miss, and gets hit from behind on that tank. That's a fantastic tank shot. Takes the Shrike right out completely. Flag still uh, in the hands of Nitrous, it would look like, and he's got... Uh, Nitrous running. Which pack is he running right now? He's running the Ranger pack, so he's going to sit tight. Yeah, it was a raw. I apologize. I thought it was a tank. That, that would have been awesome, though, if it had been a, miss, a tank shot killing a, ta a Shrike. Usually it's the, you know, Shrike versus tank, the Shrike wins. I would have yeah. missed a tank win that battle. The only one I've ever seen do that, and unfortunately it was in a pub and not a skirmish, Thea's taken down quite a few uh, Shrikes <laughs> that way. <laughs> Thea's just the, the tank machine. That's her thing. She wants to do tanks. Um, let her do it. Make anything to make any strike. A flag. Oh, a flag was dropped. A flag was dropped. Tweak, uh, tweak also putting in a. Uh, uh, excuse me, geez, a strike on that. Unable to get any damage to either the tank or the flag carrier. So, ineffective there. Um, I'm interested to see if either team ends up in a situation where it's like you know, like a five one three or a five one four to try and get the flag back. But it's been a people sort of trickling in. Unfortunately, stand up is very hard. It's a, if you're if you got a new team, new set of players, you're not used to playing with each other. You got to really practice the standoff. My team found that out the hard way after being demolished on standoffs. It really takes a, a dedicated plan, lots of practice to sort of pull it off. It's a graph cycle. There's a graph cycle coming to attack the the bloody gold carrier with a heavy. <laughs> nitrous, I was just told to look at nitrous. What's nitrous doing? Looks like he is holding the flag. Got a couple of attackers. Toriel window. Here comes Tweak overhead. Squidly's defending him by himself. I'm not sure if this is going to be so great. There's a tank nearby, but uh, that, is, that could be pretty deadly for incoming attackers, I guess. One-shot kills. Yeah. I gotta give credit to the Void. Llama's been doing extremely well on uh, coordinating their timing of the attacks, having three guys come in at a time, but I gotta give credit where credit is due to Void. They've fought off each individual attack very very well. I'm gonna see a pass from Nitrous as he is out of health over Squidly, and probably Nitrous with the regen and then come back to him, because Squidly is half health, but but yeah, good defensive play there. It does seem like a very defensive-oriented standoff right now, so... I, I totally agree with you. It has been really good to see uh, Void Engineer repelling all these attacks, and I've, it's kind of funny to see all these grab cycles and vehicles being used by Void Engineers to handle this. It's really only been, you know, I think they've kind of abandoned the strike play they were doing on the on the Lomo grab side. 
another pass to Nitrous again. I think they're going to be com content to have just these three guys, Squidly, Lambeth, and Nitrous, hold the flag, and then send everybody else to get the flag back from Shark Hacks and company. I, I also got to laugh at uh, Laoken's position right now with the flag sitting on top of that rock arch in the back. Nice the, the, point. The Stonehenge of Doom. <laughs> yeah, and like I said, there's all these guys, guys now. As Craig is pointing out to us, there are, he's just he's running for his life. There's a couple guys trying to help him, but uh, he's having to turn back around and he's going to run trying to another couple of attackers. He goes down. Rip's going to look for that return. Gets it right away. Let's see if he's in position to get this cap. No tweak is right there. He could hopefully get an e grab. But he's going right underneath. No, too late. Good job. Window. Sorry. Tweak was not right in the right position to get that e grab, and so that's going to make it a one point game. We have eight minutes left, folks. So that's plenty of time in tribes to turn the game around, definitely. Yeah, really good. The other thing that went unnoticed there, sort of the uh, the unsung heroes there, were the suicides. The second they returned, they suicided and got guys home to escort the cap in, so really good play there. Yes. A unique feature to tribes is sort of the, the quick respawn times, means that it's all about positioning. You don't have to worry about spending two minutes waiting for your teams to die so you can try another time. It's, it's, it's constant action. I love tribes for that reason. It's, it's just been really cool to see a new, a new shiny tribes game with the suiciding and the positional play and the teamwork. Uh, and again, the, the timing is, it's all about timing, like coordinating an attack with your flag carriers uh, and just how quickly you can turn the score around. That's what makes tribes watchable to me. Here comes Tweak to try and attack for Shark Axe again, I suspect. But here comes Nitrous with the Shrike is going to try and stop it. Yeah, we might have a triple defense right now from Llama, too. I'm just noticing they've got, uh, well, unless Shark Axe is slowly setting up a route. Strike coming in on their stand. Both players do manage to get off. Laokin went way far off, so they've got three on stand and two playing an LD position, light defensive position. Vitor coming in, trying to get that flag off stand. Snow oh, wow, Snow Snowdog coming in from the back. And uh, he's going to go up the middle. Strike on him, though. Is he going to get taken down? Very little health does go down. Squidly coming in with a... Sorry, Arthur Sid coming in with a great shot. Flag sitting there at mid is going to be an easy return for Tom. Yeah, so that, that's that may be... have been a fake by Bytor that you saw, so it's not going to get away. And Toriel, I think, got away with the flag, but it's being babysat after a quick snipe by Lanthus, I think. And uh, so, yeah, I, must, I was asked to look at more the class changes that they do. There was, again, a Doombringer on, on the, on the uh, standoff, but it's gone. Oh, the Toriel flag is now still alive, escorted by Shark Hacks. But again, there's still one Pathfinder, uh, Furious Phantom. No, a couple of Pathfinders. Furious Phantom and Pathfinder are still Pathfinder for um, uh, Water Engineers, and he's actually moving that flag to the field right now. Lennon has gone Technician. Maybe that's because he's doing Shrike up duty. I'm not sure. And then it's just mostly Soldier Ranger, Pathfinder, one Sentinel, and one Raider for the Llama Grab team. Yeah, and just looking at the scores right now, Land this leads to be uh, seems to be leading the way overall. He is in that Sentinel position or Sniper, or as I like to say, Scope uh, position <laughs> for uh, for the Void Engineers. He's a he's a very dominant player. And speaking of which, Winners got their flag back and they've tied it up. That's amazing. Five minutes to go. It's a tie game. For a while, Could we see overtime. We might. Not, I mean, it's not a lot of time to get a lot of action going. It just depends on what happens. I was going to say a minute ago that Laokin was being very brave with his strike, trying to get the flag back. But to no avail, Void Engineers has prevailed and has shown Long Grab it's not going to be an easy revenge match for them. Two strikes, like you said. There's two strikes out for Llama Grab. Laokin and who is this? I've missed it. One second. <laughs> Land Shark Hacks are both. It could be a, a strike grab attempt. By Shark Hacks. I mean, you can get so much speed off of that. Yeah, I wouldn't that, be surprised. One's a grab, one's an escort. And we're going to see right now, as it looks like they're going to start to set up. I was told earlier in the week, I didn't think that there was actually a lot of... There, oh, Laukin actually was the person who grabbed, must have faked them out. And I was told that the Europeans didn't too. strike, but I heard actually they, they do double strike whenever they can on the European servers. Furious Phantom is trying to get this flag alive that's being based out in the field. I don't think it's going to happen though. It could be an easy Bite. timed return to make it 4-1 for Llama Grab. Bite you are sitting sorry. on the stand though. Ooh, could he grab? you're right! But he, he is going to get a chance is. there. Yeah, no, he was the only one around. So, yeah, e grab, but uh, a futile attempt. That's going to make four, three, four minutes remaining. We'll see if that does it. But obviously, like you said, action can come at any given time in this yeah, game. Yeah, I mean, a, a one point game is not a one game at all. You can't get a place in it. You have to keep the pressure on. You have to keep playing like it's like your life depends on it. And, you know, life of the of winning does depend. So, no did come in. There was a whole sort of offensive rush of engineers to try and stop that cap, but it was a little bit too late. Unfortunately, the flag that they had moved um, didn't have enough support, and so it was an easy time return. But like you said, there was that Bytor was there to try and stop it, but he was just not enough. 
not by himself. Yeah. It's a the team other thing, game. You can't do be a hero very much. Go ahead. Well, true. The other thing is, is he grabbed in. You know, that, that really late e-grab works right now pretty much only with Scrambler. You can throw a white out and get out the backside, and then you're causing them to chase you. He grabbed in soldiers, so he didn't really have a chance to get himself out of there. Even one disc jump doesn't give you that much speed yet. Hopefully, uh, hint, hint, high res. Hopefully, we'll see a little more disc jumping in uh, in the future. Oh, man. He, Snowdog is moving through the mid, but the, the opposite direction, Toriel is all the way over the hill. Dodge is a snipe, and he's going to be going down this hill. Uh, back to the safety of his defenders. Let's see if this goes in Stand of Moon again. That would obviously be really bad. Really bad for uh, No, I think that's because... it. Oh, did they get it back? They did get it back. He was surrounded oh, on the way God. in, and that's going to be the cap out. So 5-3 to three here for uh, Lama over Void <laughs> Engineering. Lam Lammer grab. Oh, my God. <laughs> We're going to quickly take the recording down, or the stream down for a second to go back to map 2, but we'll be back. Be back. Expect it, everybody.